Hello there, it's Steve Plantel demonstrating how to build a clickable button for a WebGL banner project that goes to the internet. So let's get moving here. We have two things we need to make. We need to make an invisible button. Invisible button layer and an actions button or an actions layer. It's just best practice to have an actions layer. It keeps everything laid out, clean, and concise. Hitting R or clicking over here in the tool panel, we're in the essentials, essentials workspace. If you want to get rid of the outline color, you click here and you select that, but we're going to make this one white so it's less perceptible when it hovers over our banner ad. So on a, I'm building, building that on the wrong layer. Let's go to visible button layer. Make sure we're putting this where it needs to be. Hitting Q allows me to stretch it out, modify it a bit, grabbing the handles. Now, you cannot just put code on it now. You have to make sure you make it into a symbol by either hitting F8 or convert to symbol from the modify drop down menu. <laughs> Two T's, visible button, graphic. Oh, I'm going to say, I'll call it overlay or something, overlay graphic. That's a lot of naming. That's a lot of names right there. But something unique is important. So you don't mix it up with your button graphic layer and your other things in your library. So here, it's shown up now in your library as overlay graphic. This is one from a, oh, from a previous effort. Okay, here. Now, while you're on that, let's place it in the right spot on the timeline. Let's make it show up right before, if you hide it, you can see there's where the button shows up. The, what looks like the button you're going to click. You have to make this almost invisible by not going there. You have to go up to the top layer of your scene construction and go right click. Oh, properties, style, alpha. This tab will be here if you uh, if you click on it before you go looking for this tab. Otherwise, you won't find it has to be selected. Now, I put it to the computer, the rendering, the computer, the mouse has to understand there's an object there, so it has to be something there. If you put it at zero, it's virtually not there and will never lead you to the proper website because it won't work. So here we are. Let's go to the button right above it and go actions. Let's make an actions right here. Actions one. Now that's gonna put it on the first frame, but we can deal with that. Go to code snippets, this little less than and greater than symbols there. WebGL actions. Double left click to get it down here. You cannot drag it, you cannot double tap it with with a with a pen. You can't right click it. This is the only way to get this thing to show up. It has instructions that show that you must replace this adobe.com with your appropriate URL. So Bighorn Energy for this project. This would just open another URL if you want to type another one in. That really seems unnecessary. And get some space there. On your timeline, you should have this action right there above your graphic. Let's lock as much stuff as we can and know that there is an invisible button. We can turn it to outline mode, wireframe mode, and you can see indeed that even a sloppy clicker would probably go to the website you're intending them to visit. So if my animate was rendering properly, when you hit control test movie or just hit control enter on your keyboard, it would render you a web browser page, a tab in your web browser 
that you could then for therefore see this movie, click on the zone, it leads you to a website. You'll have to trust me on that part. I just wanted to make sure that this this demo is out there so that it's clear and can help whoever needs it, students, professionals, <laughs> uh, freelancers, whatever. All right, good luck to you guys. See you later.